Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and this is 70k special Q&A. Before we move on to this video, yes I am totally aware that we have crossed 70k like almost quite a days ago but in the last month I posted on my Facebook wall that hey I'm gonna be doing a Q&A session and you can put down your questions in this thread. And after that, I didn't got time to record the video, so it's a delayed video. But anyways, it's again a special Q&A, and I'm planning to do all these Q&A every single month. They are always fun, and to be honest, these are my favorite kind of videos that I always like to do. Answering your questions is the best thing that I can do, and I honestly love this part. I did receive a lot of questions in my Facebook thread where I posted about Q&A session. A lot of questions did came in the inbox and email as well and I have selected a few of them to answer in this particular video. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's start with the first question. The first question here says effective time management tips. You are doing a great work sir. I uh, wish you a million subscriber. The only reason why I'm doing all this channel and YouTube is your warm wishes. I just love to receive all of your wishes and thank you so much. Keep this love coming up and I'll be doing more effective work. Related to your question effective time management tips I have already done a video I'll put a link in the description below make sure you check that out and of course in the future I'll be doing some more time management tip videos for sure. Question number two is interesting. It says Bangalore meetup time, date and venue. Yes, I do have plan to come up to Bangalore, but I'm actually making sure that my stay in the Bangalore is as long as possible. A lot of my friends and a lot of subscribers really want to meet me at Bangalore. So for sure, I will be staying like almost five or six days in the Bangalore. Whenever I'll be at Bangalore, I will be posting down uh, my hotel name and at the time when I'll be available uh, for sure at my Facebook page. Make sure you subscribe to my Facebook page as well. I know I'm asking a lot subscribing on YouTube, subscribing on Facebook page, but these are the ways how you can be connected with me and can get all the information. So make sure you hit down the Facebook page and I'll for sure meet everyone in the Bangalore. As of now, dates are not yet confirmed, but the tour is for sure confirmed. It will be there and I will be in Bangalore for sure. The next question says, congrats bro, and you can hire someone for .NET Bootcamp tutorial for your .NET viewers. Yes, I would love to hire someone who has actually good knowledge about the .NET for preparing a course. But the problem arises when people ask like insane amount of money for preparing these courses. I do understand that preparing these kinds of courses is really not an easy process. And you have to prepare all these projects two times, one before recording and one at the time of recording. Then again, there are a lot of fumbles in recording that you have to delete and a lot of post-processing work. And people usually charge for these kinds of courses like uh, 1.5 lakhs or 2 lakhs or 1 lakhs at least and I'm offering these courses for all the students at affordable price. Usually people sell these courses for like 10,000 or at least 8,000. I'm selling these courses at pennies so people usually don't like to work for these kinds of things. In case you know somebody who can work for me for .NET development things or is ready to willing to give his time uh, for the benefits of the student, I would be really happy to have him on board. I have seen uh, this honestly in the past that people who actually uh, joins on some company, uh, big giant names, uh, it's easy while sitting at that position, it's easy to say that uh, I'm not gonna waste my time in teaching the students or I'm not gonna help them, I'm not gonna support them. Uh, it's really easy to say these kinds of things, but actually it takes a lot of courage, a lot of guts and lots of hard work to come forward and say that yes, I am gonna teach this alongside with my work. Uh, I'm not bashing around anybody, but yes, it's easy to say things than doing it. Uh, in case you know somebody who can do it or you really want to uh, support some kind of things by preparing courses or anything, I would be really happy to onboard you. Of course, prizes are going to be there and I'm ready to willing to pay to you for your hard work, but uh, I'm not ready to pay like uh, 3 lakhs, 4 lakhs just for a single course. And on top of that, I'm going to be offering these courses for just pennies uh, just to maintain the website. The next question is about the most hot topic in the market, which is machine learning. I want to learn machine learning. Should I, how should I begin? And all resources and all. Now, learning with the machine learning is actually fun and a lot of people want to jump onto it. But before you jump onto machine learning, make sure you have some kind of prerequisite. 
as I told earlier in my videos as well, uh, Python is number one essential thing that you must, you should always have in your bag if you are looking forward for machine learning. Yes, there are other ways like R is a great language if you want to get started with machine learning. But make sure without any kind of an option, mathematics, yes, maths is an essential thing for all of the machine learning. You should be really good in Fourier transform, your Bayes theorem, your probability, your statistics, and discrete functionality and neural networks. These are the most basic thing for machine learning. It's not like anybody can stand up, wake up at night, I'm going to learn machine learning. It doesn't happen like that. You should be really good in mere mathematics and then for sure uh, you can jump into machine learning. Regarding to your questions, uh, just recently I did a giveaway uh, for machine learning. That was an amazing book. You can check down on my Facebook page. You can buy it or can wait for the next giveaway where we'll be doing more such kind of books giveaway. That is an amazing resource to get started with machine learning. As of now, get started with Python or R. This question will invoke some kind of war between Windows and machine and let me answer that and start this war. Which you will choose MacBook i5 processor 8 GB RAM or Windows laptop i7 processor 16 gigs RAM both are having same price. Uh, any given day I would choose a MacBook. Uh, the reason why I would be choosing the MacBook I'm not saying Windows machines are bad. I have started my whole journey of programming on Windows platform. The reason why I would not prefer a uh, a Windows machine now and would prefer a MacBook right now because right now my time is really the most valuable thing with me and I don't want to waste my time in just uh, doing updates random updates that automatically just appear without any intimation there or or a lot of time is being wasted in just setting up the machine on my MacBook devices I just open it up and I start working and that's the most efficient thing here other reasons that I would be choosing a MacBook is its rendering time uh, the videos that I produce here are way more shorter in the rendering time as compared to what is being produced on the Windows uh, very high-end devices so that's one of the reason I would like to stick because I make a lot of videos and that's why I like to stick on to the Mac but again I'm fully comfortable on Windows as well so there is no such problem here next question is about social media why are you not on Quora uh, honestly maintaining these social media is really tough thing for me I'm not even on Twitter I am on Twitter somehow but I don't have any app or I don't manage it much often only thing that I manage is my Facebook page and this YouTube channel uh, it's really a time thing I would love to be on Quora or Twitter but it's really a time constraint for me we are getting a little bit personal here and uh, he says what are your future plans what is your main source of income freelancing contracts learn code online or something else if you can tell how much percent uh, they make of your total income uh, it's really a personal I don't like to disclose my income on these public platforms but really it's good enough it's decent enough and majority of them is still coming up from the contracts uh, that I did for the other persons maintaining their apps and website that is again a huge part of it and learn code online is a kind of a public social work that I love to do yes YouTube is generating pretty good amount of money from the advertising and other resources uh, I cannot tell you exact figure but yes it is good enough to buy a Harley Davidson uh, or to have some Europe vacations or vacations in India it's pretty decent and I'm happy with my income and that's the most important part how much you are earning and in how much you are happy that's the important so I'm totally happy with it okay you might a lot of you might be having this kind of questions what if AI takes everything in future and there's no more need of programmers just to give you in the context of your situation there are driverless car coming up does this mean that everybody should be stop applying for driver's license everybody should be uh, stopping and learn to how to drive no it doesn't happen just like that it's a process and it's a breeze and uh, I'm not sure what's going to be the future but right now I can say that don't worry and don't stop learning programming just because some uh, media guys or some blog post has been written simply saying that hey in the future there will be no need of programmers they have done this just to get some ERPs and some visitors on their blog it's not going to happen not anytime soon at least for 10 years I can say for sure even if machine learning and AI are totally the future there go there is going to be a need of programmers who can tell those machine learning to learn from where so obviously to manage those uh, I believe there will be in in fact a much more high rise in the programming fields and programming demands so I would say stop worrying too much you are getting worried too much don't do that start learning now interesting question here uh, why you came in freelancing and didn't join any big giants 
Uh, actually, I have joined a couple of companies in the past. I did work there, one of the companies for six months in India. And uh, then I worked as a kind of a remote uh, employee for a company in New York. It was a startup. And then I was invited at Amazon for my NS3 work. So yes, I was offered a couple of jobs uh, to be done here and in the United States as well. But I preferred uh, India here because I love the environment. Uh, honestly, the thing that I'm doing right now here is not at all possible if I'll be working in somebody's company. Uh, driving down your Harley Davidson is not at all even possible uh, even after like two or three years of job in the United States. And here I'm living a happy life with my Harley Davidson, uh, enjoying making these videos. So I would prefer this kind of a lifestyle. On top of that, they would have their own dress code and I like, I like to wear all the time my gray t-shirt. Probably this is also one of the reasons. Not strong, but yes, this is one of them. Okay, so this was a quick Q&A, 70K special Q&A, but uh, we have moved forward quite a lot and definitely I'll be posting again a thread for the Q&A. I love these interesting questions that came up for my personal life as well as for programmatic life. I really love to answer them. Definitely stay tuned on my Facebook page as well as on YouTube. I will be posting again a thread for putting up your questions. I would be really, really happy to answer all of them. With this, that's it for this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as in case you have enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and I will surely catch you up in the next video. Some kind of shiver in your presence